So today is the day. With the release of Ticket Moon Planes looming less than a week away, I've been putting a ton of time in here on Transylvania trying to age our wild boar up to 5 star and either we're going to have a 5 star boar today or it's going to have to wait until after the release of Ticket Moon Planes. So I believe aging has just occurred. It is about 9am. Wild boar don't drink till 11. So we're going to go for a little hunt, make sure everything's into their zones, and then we'll go and check it out. Anthem. First thing we encounter today is a group of roe deer, and that's going to make for a pretty interesting situation. So we're carrying the 350 today, and that's going to be the only kind of long range weapon we have. Going to be kind of overkill for a roe deer, but just going to have to be what we use. I love the sound of it. I just wish it was a little bit more powerful, but because I'm fairly confident of aging and basically because we're down to our last chance at this, I have the crossbow on us. Should we find anything special at all? Kind of like in the situation of the 5-star Philo last time. We didn't have it on us, and we just didn't have time to go back and get it, so this time we're carrying it, should our wild boar have actually aged like I'm pretty much hoping. As for our road here, I'll be kind of interested to see, because he's like a decent-looking 2-star mature, but I'm guessing because they don't live that long. Yeah, 63%? Still fairly low on the genetic potential, and just for fun, that was a meat loss of 30 pounds, using the 350. Gonna be, like I said, a little bit overkill, but honestly, for things like Red Deer, it's actually even underpowered, so kind of falls somewhere in the middle there. Way back before we knew much of anything about Way the Hunter, this particular herd of Red Deer, we shot a one-star young, thinking that it just wasn't gonna matter, and it turned out to be a 90%er, and since then, we've had nothing all that special, but a one-star mature that we had spotted there, definitely needs taken out and again like i said the 350 is a little weak for these guys so we might actually go for a back of the head shot if we can get that that'll drop minutes tracks and that is probably just about the only way to drop a red deer with the 350 but what i actually want to do while it's red deer drink time is head up to that herd that we saw i think in the last video somewhere right up in here and see if that three star mature has maybe aged up to be a five star. We've passed quite a lot of time at trying to get our wild boar aged. We probably should check on that red deer. And as we kind of head up there to do that, maybe taking this guy out helps the overall red deer genetics. I actually got the brain shot there. Half the time we missed the brain and just the skull shot kills him, but 24%. Always good to get stags like that out of the herd. And let's move up through here. I'm pretty sure it was like this herd. So we have a ways to go, and it's already 10 o'clock. And go figure we find another herd of wild boar at a little kind of pit stop pond over here. We've got a one-star mature and a two-star mature, so let's go ahead and get the one-star. We're going to end up, if he's walking like that, going for another headshot. He just turned broadside and actually kind of turning away from us. I mean, if we got to shoot him in the spine, we will. That doesn't appear to like it dropped him though looks like lung blood so i think it's gonna get him but that's not really what i thought was gonna happen and this is just so par for the course with the 350 we've been tracking this thing all the way to the point that the rest of the herd is just standing here and i still see blood right up there behind that two star so before we end up going for some crazy shot again let's go for a proper shot this time and maybe one more for good measure did that hit I really don't want to be tracking for too long because we're already kind of setting ourselves back in terms of getting to the red deer zone that I want to get to, and that is still before we actually go for the main goal here of checking our other wild boar zone, but I still don't actually see the first one we shot. There's just a long trail of blood, and frankly, it only would have gotten worse if we had kind of intertwining blood trails. We even got like double lung there, a little bit of heart cavity damage. We did kind of clip the neck, or even hit the skull a little bit, and it just didn't kill him that is so interesting 60 percent for that but it's it's funny that it works that way even on class 5 animals because it's really consistent on red deer elk class 6 animals all the time like a single lung shot just results in an insanely long blood trail with a bunch of little blood spatters now getting back on track could be a bit of a problem but i thought it was right up here oh and actually he was laying just behind where we shot the two star. So we missed the spine by a mile there. Got a little bit of cavity damage, but it basically did nothing. Second shot was 
artery. So to be fair, in this case, it wasn't really the bullet's fault. And we'll have to try to just make a regular lung shot on a boar at some point. 42% for that. Got a couple of kind of subpar ones taken out. And all I wanted to do was make a pit stop at this pond. But now we are well kind of east of where we want to go. Still got almost a mile to walk yet. Just approaching this zone is almost impossible. But Vazar Stag, he's still only a four star. I feel like so many years have gone by. But he was such a young looking three. I really think he's going to make it. So I guess we'll have to go at least one more age cycle for him. There's a three star beside him. And then this one over here is a two star. Now it's kind of young-ish. But I think that might be okay to take. So we might as well maybe try to contribute to the herd. And we know in taking this shot. It's probably going to take some time till he goes down. But let's go for it. Should be a long hit. I cannot see the blood to make that determination. But we'll scoot up here and see. Actually, he looks like he's hit pretty hard. I just kind of saw him stumble through there. Now that is interesting. He went almost nowhere. And he might be a little bit kind of younger of a mature than I thought. Oh, he had that shot perfect to hit him in the heart, I think. But it looks like it still fell a little bit shy. Probably just due to lack of energy, or it went through the heart. Or it sure looks like it did. And just didn't do any damage. That's interesting. It could have been the, like, laying down sort of animation he was in, but 75% he was decent, but not a future 5 star or anything. And before we go over and take a look at our wild boar, there is one deer which I'm sure you can very clearly see from here that we need to take a look at. This is our newest kind of probably obsession here in Wave Hunter. We have an albino red deer stag. I'm not sure if he's now a 1 star adult. That may have been what that said. I believe he's three years old, but I might be off on that. It just depends on how old he was when I initially spotted him. And so far, I've been able to keep up with him and get decent footage of him. Because I want to do a short with this, like I did with Showstopper. But getting close enough to get that footage can be a real chore. I want to spot again, because if he is a one-star adult, that would absolutely confirm aging has happened. The only thing is, they know we're here. And he is a one-star adult now. I actually just went and looked at the encyclopedia. I don't know why this is the case, but apparently, Red Deer actually start at two years old. So this would be his third year, meaning he's four years old, which still doesn't make any sense to me, but he would be now an adult. So we've seen the three cycles he's actually been on the map for, and I think we'll go on this little journey together of basically taking a couple steps at a time, trying to sneak into range to get decent footage of him, and see what he looks like up close. By the way, there's a four-star fallow over there. He looks kind of small for a four-star and pretty gray. But that'll be something to watch too while we're down here. And we've actually managed by just hitting a color to get him to kind of come this way. Now, I've found younger red deer will respond to pretty much any call, high or low fitness, almost like curiously walking in and then typically walking away. Now we can see he is pretty clearly uneven. Though I'm not sure how important that actually is when it comes to Red Deer, because both of our 5 stars are actually relatively uneven, and at least he's a 3x3. Three three. So I don't really know what to make of him coming into this particular collar, and just in general, what to make of those antlers. But this will be the third year of getting nice up-close footage of him, and I really can't wait to see what he turns into, regardless of, you know, the current level of symmetry. He's in an area that clearly has solid red deer genetics. And I was actually looking at this one. That's a two-star mature that's looking kind of old. So while we're here and spending all this time looking at our albino, we might as well take this guy. We actually just saw a broadside shot do really well from the 350. If he'll take that leg forward, it opens up the chest cavity a little more and maybe gives us a chance at a hard shot. Although it kind of looked like we just got one and didn't do anything. And... Just to tie a little bow on this area before we shift gears and go and look for our boar, I'm thinking of naming our albino red deer Blockbuster. I think it's a good kind of parallel to Showstopper, our albino whitetail from Nez Perce, and I really like it because it was one of these suggested names actually for our melanistic mule deer that we ended up naming Midnight. So that's what I want to go with, and I want to see what you guys think of that in the comments below. But 57% for that guy, 
same herd as the albino, so maybe not the best sign, but like I said, the area's red deer genetics look good. I think that's gonna work though. We're a little past 12 o'clock, boar should be well into their zones, and it's up in this area here, so fingers crossed we get to make use of the crossbow, but it's all gonna depend on if that boar's genetics were as good as they looked. I think we just about messed up. This is not typically where they are. They might be in their rarely used zone, but none of these boar look correct. The only thing is, we can't spot that one male there. That's a five-star boar right there. Okay, so I think we found the right ones. There should have been a three-star mature in here though, I think. It could be that we're just spotting the wrong stuff. Either way, I think we should go ahead and try to call him in. The wind is decent here. And maybe, is there enough room? That's like 20 yards. Actually, I think we're gonna scoot up a little bit before we call. Typically, I approach from like where they're standing. We got so lucky, but I think this is gonna work a whole lot better. So that's him there, only 90 yards away to begin with. And I think maybe they noticed us moving one last time there. As long as we just start bringing them in, we don't need to move anymore. The wind is not terribly strong, even though it is a crosswind. And actually, I'm considering trying to shoot him quartering. The one problem with boars, their head's gonna basically cover their entire chest cavity when they're facing us, and that could be a problem. So we'll see what we can kind of work out, but I definitely wanna go crossbow after all this time trying to get him up to five stars. The only problem might be this three stars kind of coming right in. It's almost like when he hits the creek, he gets a little bit lost. Are five stars over there? He's at 60, but I'm thinking they are going to still come over here because I think the three star did just get across. If we don't move, he should hang around a minute, but that's just with this wind, that's a little too far. I think this is going to happen. That three stars kind of just circling, trying to figure out what we are. Five star is almost in range. He's at 40 yards in closing. I think it might be ideal if we let him kind of do the same thing whenever we get a decent angle at it. We'll go for it regardless. That might work. Still kind of facing us directly. I really want him to turn so that we don't hit that skull because it covers almost everything that we need to hit. Eventually, either he's going to get close enough that he notices us or the call is going to run out, but he is literally probably 15 yards or less this might be our chance we got to be ready as soon as he turns that is so cool seeing the tusks like that he's bound to do it could try to get that shot under the skull but i'm afraid of clipping it i don't think we're gonna risk anything like that we do not want to damage the trophy was that a warning call there we go that looks perfect that has to be a long shot i can't imagine how it wouldn't be. I see a lot of blood there. Oh, I don't think he's going anywhere. I can't believe he even ran from that. That's a ton of blood. But we just shot our first ever five-star wild boar here on Transylvania with the crossbow. And it was literally at like, I don't know, 10 yards? And go figure, I can't imagine a worse spot for him to have dropped. Can we even get a photo here? We might be able to kind of play with FOV and get it to not look as bad. It's gonna look pretty bad though, I think. I mean, making the most of what we got, but this actually was the three-star adult boar that we spotted in, I think the last video or maybe even the video before that. Ended up being a double long shot at 13 yards. And there was just, he never offered any shot. You look at how big this skull is. Like if we went for that shot up under the skull and just clipped like the bottom of it, it could have ruined the trophy and we wouldn't be able to taxidermy him. But, he has a 96%. I'm not shocked by that, given the the fact that he was a three-star adult. 474. Still probably had a year left in him then. But they're really not mature for that long. I think it's from ages 10 to 14. Gonna taxidermy that. That will become a part of the multi-mount with our black wolf from the missions. And we're actually slowly starting to cross off a lot of the species here on Transylvania as far as getting five stars. But we actually encountered him. I think it was over here basically on this hillside and just to quickly explain what happened he had to have been in a different herd that we spotted that had a three star mature because ultimately it turned out there were two four stars in that herd the one that we killed just now that became a five star 
and one that died of old age. We had to have spooked them and they just stopped over there and I didn't realize it was the same herd. That's the only explanation for why I've been unable to find anything else. And then of course, when this guy makes five star at that genetic potential percentage, it all kind of starts to add up, but they should have been drinking over there. That's their often used drink zone. It was just pure dumb luck that we didn't send them running out of there and cause a way bigger problem. You are actually kidding me. We have another five star pheasant as well. That'll become more insane in just a second. So why don't we try to kill that with a crossbow? I'd like to get out of the air. That's just not going to happen. Can we get it even off the ground with a crossbow? I want to go low. Just in case that bolt went over its head. It would have been neat to kill that out of the air with a crossbow. There's just no way we'd hit it. The genetics in general here, boar and pheasant, but especially pheasant, must be absolutely nuts. Can we actually claim this thing? There's so much blood. There we go. Almost managed to get him in the heart, but basically center punched him, which is good. 93% for him. And that is a total score of 481. Not bad. But the reason that's kind of ridiculous is basically in trying to come up here and figure out what the deal was with that three-star adult wild boar that seemed to have vanished, which again, I just kind of explained what actually happened there. I ended up finding another five-star pheasant and I did try to take that one out of the air with the rifle. And frankly, I didn't deserve to get it. Missed those first couple of shots. Two flew up when they flushed kind of again. And it was a 50-50 shot as to whether or not we got the right one. Decided to go for it, why not? And somehow we killed the right pheasant. He was 99% genetics, much like the first one we got here, and a 498 score. So we've killed from this area a 499, a 498, and I think a 481 or whatever that pheasant we just got was, all in the place where we ultimately killed our first five-star wild boar. And we're kind of racking up quite a lot of stuff here on this map now, and we still have our albino red deer. And just maybe our last kill is going to end up being a one-star mature fallow. There is a kind of decent one back there. That looks like maybe a three-star. We're still spawning the wrong one. That is a three-star. So that's at least encouraging. And there's actually another one-star mature behind him. So whatever we can get a shot at, not with a crossbow, but with the 350, is in all likelihood going to be our last kill unless something else ends up walking out by the time we go to claim it. And I do want to go back A and put ourselves in the lodge, but that's the three-star. He is pretty gray, but even still, got to have better genetics than the couple of one-star matures. And as soon as one of them will stab out, that's going to be one of the two. That'll work, and even that doesn't drop from the 350. I love this gun, but I feel like it just needs a little bit more. That's a pretty big fallow over there. We got a call. Man, I don't think he's quite going to be 5-star. He's got to be a solid 4, though, if he's not 5. Don't want to run too much, but I also want to get him spotted. And of course, we're just getting that 1-star. That is a wide set rack. Hold on a minute. I want to get just a little bit closer and confirm here. We just absolutely cannot spot the right deer. We're getting it for a second there, I think. And just like the wild boar, it just adds to the suspense of trying to figure out what is going on. That is a five star. You are kidding me. You are actually kidding me. Literally a call away from never having any idea that was there. Okay. We actually have the fallow deer caller, I think. Are they in range to start coming in? We've got the crossbow. So maybe we can make up for not killing the previous five star fallow with the crossbow there. Is he turning to come in? He might just be. That is ridiculous. Look at that from that angle. Man, he might be bigger than the one we got in the previous video. He is huge. Super, super wide set. And that was the thing that was so notable as he was kind of walking away. I want to... That's interesting he's feeding now. I want to get like to a spot where we can see down over this. Because we don't want to get in too close. Almost like what we did for the wild boar. As long as we can see into the creek, we're going to be all set. And if he act like the boar did when he gets to the water we might get a good like maybe 30 yard broadside shot if we keep sneaking up to the water a little bit more now that is cool watching him just call back at us i know it's not 
the most realistic foul to your collar, just being sort of a grunt and bleak call. But that was pretty neat. I'm still slowly like a step at a time so he doesn't see us. Trying to get up here so if he does turn broadside in the creek, we can take him there. He is looking bigger and bigger the closer he gets. So potential moment of truth here. He's heading down towards the creek now. And he's at 40 yards there. So I'm going to get this 0 for 33. And if he does turn broadside in there, we'll go for that shot at that. If he doesn't, we'll have to wait. That's what we're looking for. Dropped him in his tracks. That hit a little further back than I wanted, so it kind of scared me, but we hit something decent enough to insta-kill him. That was insane. Watching him approach, too, was just so cool. I didn't realize how deep this was. I don't know that he could have crossed it. Maybe he would have managed. I don't think we're getting a photo of this. So maybe we'll take one in the trophy lodge? That is, like, in the liver. Where did that hit? Oh, it... Really? That was an insta-drop with, like, a stomach intestine shot? Had we paid any attention to the wind, we'd have probably aimed more like here. I knew there was a crosswind and I couldn't remember the direction, but when he turned, I figured we just had to go for the shot. Really lucked out at that. That's a 95 genetic potential fallow buck. And a 483.9 score. Not exactly the shot I wanted on that, but it ended up working out with the absurd power of that crossbow. Got a bunch of gray legs flying over. What a cool scene. To wrap this up, we still have that one star down back to our left. Want to make sure there's nothing else here, because the way this hunt's going, it wouldn't shock me, but I think whatever it ends up being, three five stars counting the pheasant, probably is going to be it. And just coming back to this one star mature that we were supposed to end the video on, that was, it was literally insane for that to actually happen. But this one, we ended up with a double lung and... At least a lot of damage to the heart from the bullet expansion. 47%. And just across the creek over there was a 95%. But now we have a whole lot of stuff to put in the trophy lodge. So first of all, we have a two-star mature wild boar that we shot forever ago. And really the only difference is going to be the tusks. And if you look at it, the top tusk especially, you actually see the difference. When we cycle between the 2-star and the 5-star, there's much more notable top tusks, and I think the bottom ones are a little kind of bigger, maybe a little longer. But really cool to finally have gotten that. I wanted a 5-star in there from the very beginning, and finally we have one on the wall. Then we have a second 5-star pheasant to go next to this one. This is that one that we shot out of the air by pure luck next to another one. Let's do... we might as well do a separate pose for this guy, just so they're not doing the exact same thing. And we have another Faladir, which will kind of sort of complete our multi-mount. One of them is still a four-star. I intend to one day replace that. But I want to see, is there a notable difference between the one that we killed last time, which I think was a total score of 470-something, and our new one from today is going to come in at 480. Why don't we actually replace this so they're both kind of standing straight up? Now we'll put the four-star in the middle for now. I definitely felt that we're probably going to have to use the field of view and the camera to really look at it again, but I thought the frame in general for the 480 today was actually a little bigger. And I could be seeing what I want to see, but I kind of think that's the case. I think it's just a little wider set. It's not by much, but it definitely looks to have just a slightly larger frame, just covering a little more real estate there. Either way, really cool to have all three of these guys in the lodge, and again, the way we're going here on Transylvania, maybe we get a third five-star fallow sooner rather than later, but I'm just really, really pleased to be making progress in this lodge. We've got a five-star boar now, we've got two five-star fallow, two five-star pheasants, actually three five-star pheasants. We've got our jackal, our roe deer. We're just slowly but surely chipping away at this lodge in Transylvania. Tons of plaques still to put stuff on. But it's looking a little bit better now that all these full body platforms are getting filled. But anyway, that is going to do it for this video. And I think next time we step foot in Way the Hunter, it's most likely going to be on Tickman Plains. So I'm really glad we got that done. But anyway, on that note, thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you next time.